Hey everyone, this is Ricky Bell with Victolic VDC. I'm a senior application developer for Victolic Tools for Revit. So today I wanted to talk about the components ribbon. Now this is the right hand side of the Victolic Tools tab that's available after you install Victolic Tools for Revit. Now up in this area, each of our product lines will be represented by different ribbons. You'll see the Victolic IPS line is typically open by default, but you can close that by clicking on the IPS button and open up another ribbon, let's say a copper or a WWA or you know, in uh, combination with fire protection. You can have as many of them open as you want, uh, considering the fact that your icons will get smaller the more of these that you have open. If you're working in a particular product line, sometimes it's beneficial to just pull that ribbon right out of the toolbar and put it right on top of one of your views so it's there for easy access. The toolbar can then be dragged right back up into the menu, just like that. So these content buttons up here provide you with a list of available families without actually loading the families into your project and making your project larger than it has to be. I'll go back to the IPS ribbon, for example. Now all of the families that you see up here are issued by Victolic and they're available to be pulled into your project a number of different ways. The simplest way to do it is just to go ahead and click on one of the buttons and after the family loads you'll see it will appear on your mouse pointer and you're able to place it however you want. Okay. There's also other tricks that we can do with this content. Now let's say that we wanted to replace an existing family in your model. Um, a flexible coupling is an excellent example of that. I'll zoom into this area over here and if I were to highlight this selection right here, now there's multiple things in my selection. I have pipe, elbows, uh, you know, couplings. I'm going to pull out of the Victolic Tools ribbon, I'm going to pull the flexible coupling out and watch what it does. It will change out only the families that match the family that you have selected from the toolbar. So now these couplings right here are flexible. Uh, the same stands true for any elbows. If you had a different elbow that you wanted to put in here, you can make a semi sloppy selection. Go back to the Victolic Tools ribbon and maybe we do the long radius elbow right here. It works as a way to hot swap out families. Now for families that have multiple types, for example sprinklers, placement of these families will interrupt you with a type selector. So I'll go to the, maybe our pendant sprinkler here. In this list are all of the available types for this sprinkler. Now you don't want to load all of these into your project. Maybe you're looking for a specific one. You can use the search at the top to look for it and just go ahead and click it and click OK. And now it's only going to load in this family with one type into your project. And again, it's intended to keep your project as small as possible. Now one of the more advanced techniques with the component ribbon would be to swap out tap connections. More specifically, placing mechanical T's can be a challenge and our components ribbon is definitely a solution to that. So let's get some taps placed here so we can show you that. I'll use this piece right here and I'll just use the native Revit. Place a small tap off the side. So changing out a tap family on the fly within Revit is not actually possible. It does appear like you can do it. You can highlight it within your model. You can uh, change it to a different type right here. It looks like it's going to go successfully, but then Revit comes back and gives you an error, eventually just reverting your change. So the components ribbon actually makes this possible. If I were to highlight this tap right here and go up to the Victolic Tools ribbon, under the fittings menu, I have the 920 mechanical T. It makes it so much easier to place these taps. Uh, there are more advanced ways to place taps, so check out the videos on the tap creator. But this components ribbon can really get you out of a bind. Some other features of our components ribbon is the user toolbar. Let me close down fire protection here so you can see what comes in the user toolbar by default. Now, the user toolbar is a place where you can place your own families 
and place them into your model and expect them to act exactly how the Victaulic components work when you pull them out of the toolbar. So if you have a particular fitting that you end up swapping out constantly or you just need to be available to you and your team, then you can place it in the user toolbar. And here's how you do that. The settings menus in the top right. These are groups that come from Victaulic, but you can create more groups. So you just go ahead and create another group with the plus button. I'm going to use the fittings group that's here for now. You can use this browse button right here to browse out for your favorite RFA file. And then you would click the plus button and what it would do is it would add it to this list. Now immediately you're not going to see it available under the user toolbar because the user toolbar is built when all the other toolbars are built when Revit starts. So what you have to do is you have to restart Revit before you can see any of these changes they make in here. But again, this is just a way that you can have your favorite families and your common families for you and your team available to you in the Victaulic Tools user toolbar. Another feature of the user toolbar that's available to you is the ability to place hangers and supports. Now preloaded with Victaulic Tools will be a bunch of hangers right here that are non-manufacturer specific, but they work with our hanger placement array tool. Same goes for these particular supports. To place these family type hangers, you would just click on one from the toolbar and this array menu will pop up. It prompts you for uh, certain things like Imperial versus Metric. Uh, you can use the Project Spec tool to drive what these dimensions are. So definitely check out the video for the Project Spec tool if you're interested in placing hangers. But you basically give it dimensions like the distance from the start and the repeating distance. And this is going to place hangers on any piece of pipe that you click. So I'll click OK back out a little bit and as I click on each of these pieces of pipe it will place the appropriately sized hanger following the rules that we gave it which was at that time was two feet from the beginning and five feet repeating. Now the same is true for the supports families. I would just pull the one I want out of the toolbar. It would prompt me again with the array tool. I can click OK and go over to a section of my models maybe closer to the ground and place some pipe supports. Now these hanger families are sometimes preferred by our customers who use fabrication parts. So let's go over to a different part of my model that's fabrication parts and I'll show you that it works exactly the same. If I pull a hanger out of the toolbar, I can run the array tool on any of these pieces right here. And it becomes a really fast way to place hangers in your model. Now, of course, with fabrication parts, we do have a fabrication hangers button that's dedicated over here. It's basically the same idea that you would click on a piece of pipe to get some information about the service. And then at this point is where you would select which hanger you'd like to place. So there's still more to talk about when it comes to delivering content. In all of our videos, we end up using the United States Imperial type content, but there is European and United Kingdom content available as well. Now, the reason we do this is because there's nominal diameters between different regions that mean different things, and our content is built specific to those regions. So if you go up to the toolbar settings, under the other settings dialog, you can change your region. I'm going to change it from United States to Europe. Now all of my toolbars that expand when I click these buttons will tell me what region they're for. So Victaulic EU IPS, meaning that when I pull some content out of this ribbon, it's going to be the specific content for that region. So just another way to make sure that you're placing the correct components for the region you're in. I'm going to flip my toolbar back to the United States for now. There's also a button down here to download all of the content for a particular region. Now this can come in handy if you're going to spend some time offline, but typically it's not necessary. Our content is available through the web and it downloads on demand. So with all this content available to you, how can you guarantee that this content is up to date? Because we do have a content team that's constantly churning out new families with our new products and new standards. Well, there's two tools in Victaulic Tools for Revit to help you with that. The first one can be found up under our settings. Again, to other settings, there is a show content updates checkbox. And whenever this is checked, if there's a newer version of whatever family you're asking Victaulic Tools for, I'll use the elbow family for example. 
If there's a new version available, you will get prompted with a yes or no question. Would you like to update this family now? And this becomes important if any of these updates were to change end-to-end -end lengths or any other dimensions that would affect your pipe lengths. It's important to us that you're able to get accurate pipe lengths in your bills material. So this is just the first way to make sure your content is up to date. We actually have a tool specific to this. Right in the center of our content ribbon is a button called Content Center. Now this tool is scanning the project right now for any Victaulic content that it may or may not have updates available for. And then it displays a list of all of the content that is available from Victaulic. You can always flip it to updates mode right here, which will show you content that is currently in your model that has an available update. Now this list may become a little cumbersome, so there are ways to filter it down. If you're looking specifically for pipe fittings, you can always use the family category right there. If you're looking specifically for elbows in pipe fittings, you can type into the search bar and get immediate results and see what is available to update. This also serves as a content delivery tool for content you may not have yet. So flip it back to all, and then you can use these search dialogues here to grab anything from annotation tags, new hangers, title blocks, uh, mechanical equipment that we've posted, and then again use the text search to find what you're looking for. There are options at the top to uh, let you switch between United States to European content, to United Kingdom content, all trying to make the process of attaining and placing Victaulic components easier for you. And when you found the family you're looking for, just go ahead and click the Load Family button, and you'll see it disappear from the list. So this was the Components ribbon for Victaulic Tools for Revit. It contains hundreds of links to our family content for different modules and different lines of our products. It contains a user toolbar which can help you place hangers and supports and also gives you a place to put your commonly used families. There are tools to keep your families up to date or switch entire content libraries to specific regions. And then the content center which serves as a delivery method for any of the families that Victaulic makes. We hope these tools make your content management that much easier. Thanks so much for watching.